from the best exercises to the healthiest foods for cancer survivors, you won't want to miss this video because I'll be sharing the best cancer advice on YouTube. While unfortunately there is a lot of inaccurate information online, which I go over in my video titled The Worst Cancer Advice on YouTube, you can also find a ton of accurate and helpful information that you can use to help you reduce your risk of cancer recurrence. When it comes to preventing cancer or keeping it from coming back, knowledge is power. I've been working in oncology for a very long time, and I know that my patients who make healthy diet and lifestyle changes after their cancer diagnosis typically do better throughout their treatments and have a greater chance of staying in remission. Some of the best pieces of advice you can find on YouTube is on what to eat to help your body fight off cancer cells and which foods to stay away from. What you eat plays a huge role in your fight against cancer. YouTube is a fantastic resource to find videos on cancer fighting foods, recipes, and tips for improving your gut health. Having a healthy gut is really important because it helps to reduce the inflammation in your body that cancer treatment can create and it can also help to reduce your risk of recurrence. You can find some great anti-inflammatory recipes on channels like Downshiftology or Pick Up Limes. Those are some of my favorites. I also have videos on this channel for anti-inflammatory drinks, snacks, and delicious recipes, and I'll link those videos for you below. But in general, anti-inflammatory foods are most fruits and veggies, herbs, and healthy fats. While it's important to be incorporating anti-inflammatory foods into your diet, it's equally as important to be staying away from foods that create inflammation, like highly processed foods, saturated fats, and refined sugar, for example. There's a well-known professor, Dr. Thomas Seyfried, who's been interviewed by several popular YouTubers and celebrity doctors, and he's been researching cancer cell biology for over 30 years, what causes cancer, and what makes cancer cells grow. His research is showing that cancer is more of a metabolic disease than a genetic one. So similar to diabetes, obesity, or irritable bowel syndrome, he claims that 80% of cancers are caused by diet, lifestyle, or environmental factors, and are preventable. I'm not saying that I agree with everything he says, but his research is proving some very amazing things in terms of how to stop or slow down the growth of cancer cells by making healthy diet and lifestyle changes. What I like most about him is that he promotes treating the disease as well as the root cause of it, whereas most doctors just focus on treating the disease. I highly recommend checking out his YouTube interview on a channel called 5 Minute Body, and the video is titled Number One Cancer Expert, The Worst Food That Feeds Cancer Cells. Basically, he explains everything that I've been saying in a lot of my videos, that although sugar doesn't directly cause cancer, excess sugar in the bloodstream can lead to systemic inflammation, and this is what can damage the mitochondria in our cells, which leads to metabolic diseases and cancer. He also explains why we can't fully starve cancer cells, but just by fasting or cutting out certain foods. But according to him, cancer cells rely almost exclusively on glucose for energy, so having a diet with little to no carbohydrates can almost starve cancer cells, but not entirely. This is because cancer cells get most of the energy they need to survive from the carbohydrates you eat and very little from the protein or fats, but they do still get some. And even when you're fasting, cancer cells can still get the energy they need from something called glutamine, which is stored in your muscles. So can we actually starve cancer? Well, it's not looking as though we can starve cancer cells just through diet or by fasting, but what if we were able to reduce the blood supply to a tumor, something called anti-angiogenesis, by eating certain foods? There's another popular doctor named Dr. William Lee, who has a viral TED talk with over 11 million views, and you can watch it on YouTube, called Can We Eat to Starve Cancer? Dr. Lee presents a different way to think about treating cancer and other illnesses through anti-angiogenesis, which means preventing the growth of blood vessels that feed a tumor. You see, tumors need a blood supply to grow, and essentially they create new blood vessels to feed themselves. Anti-angiogenic drugs do exist, and they've been used for years to stop tumors from growing their own blood vessels. The idea is to then slow down the growth of the tumor or shrink it. But Dr. Lee claims that anti-angiogenesis can essentially be achieved by eating cancer-fighting foods that can actually cut off blood supply lines to cancer cells and beat cancer at its own game. He also claims that we are all forming microscopic cancers in our body all the time and that about 40% of women between the ages of 40 and 50 have microscopic cancers in their breasts, and about 50% of men in their 50s and 60s have microscopic prostate cancer. He also claims that all of us, by the time we reach our 70s, have microscopic cancer in our thyroid. But what's important to know here is that without a blood supply, most of these cancers will never become dangerous, which is referred to as cancer without disease. 
So if angiogenesis is the tipping point between a harmless cancer and a harmful one, then Dr. Lee is claiming that a revolutionary approach to preventing cancer is to achieve anti-angiogenesis by eating certain foods. Dr. Lee does receive some criticism from other scientists and doctors who say that he exaggerates the power of eating these foods, which may be true, but he's not advising people to forgo medical treatment for cancer. He's more advocating for the power of healthy eating, backed by science, which I think is amazing. Similar to having a healthy diet, exercise is proving to be just as effective at helping people beat cancer. In fact, new studies are showing that it can decrease your risk of recurrence by up to 60%. That's huge! One of the best YouTube channels for cancer survivors is called The Cancer Rehab PT. This physiotherapist, Kelly, has over 300 videos on everything from how to exercise after cancer surgery to how to reduce lymphedema or swelling. This channel is especially helpful for breast cancer survivors who have had surgery and lymph nodes removed because she'll teach you how to safely maintain a full range of motion in your arms after surgery, which will help to reduce or prevent lymphedema. Or if you've had a hysterectomy or abdominal surgery, the recovery process can be lengthy and painful, but she has videos that can help you, so I'd highly recommend checking her out. Exercise doesn't have to mean running 5K or pumping iron at the gym. Any movement is better than none. If you're only able to lift one or two pound weights, start there and work your way up to heavier ones. Or if you're only able to go for short walks, buy some light ankle or wrist weights and try to increase the length of your walks each day. YouTube is the best place to go to find free exercise videos of all kinds for all levels. For beginners, I'd recommend checking out Yoga with Adrian or Yes to Next. Or if you're able to do more, I really like Fit by Mick for quick strength training workouts or Body Fit by Amy. YouTube's also a great place to find videos on guided meditations or mindfulness exercises. Meditation has been scientifically proven to reduce anxiety and stress. Some people even say that it helps them to control their treatment side effects like pain or nausea. To be honest, it can take some time to see the benefits of meditation. At first, it can actually feel kind of stressful because it can be hard to quiet your busy mind. So what most people find helpful, at least when they're first starting out, is to do guided meditations. There are a ton on YouTube of different lengths, different stories, different voices. Just do a quick search and try different ones until you find some you like. But if you can keep at it and meditate even just for a short amount of time each day, you'll find that it gets easier and easier, that gradually you'll feel more calm and less stressed. But just like most things in life, you have to be consistent with it, so practicing it regularly is key. YouTube's also a great place to find uplifting stories from other cancer survivors on resilience, how they beat cancer, or what it was like to go through treatment. Watching videos and hearing the stories of others who have walked in your shoes can be incredibly comforting and reassuring, not to mention informative. Just be sure to remember that everyone's cancer diagnosis is unique, and just because someone does well or not so well throughout treatment doesn't mean that will be the case for you as well. YouTube is a goldmine of valuable information and support for anyone with cancer. Whether you're a patient, survivor, or caregiver, there are a wealth of resources at your fingertips. From education on nutrition and exercise, to stress management and guided meditations, the best cancer advice on YouTube can empower you to make healthy changes and take control of your mental and physical health. Remember, you're not alone in this battle. Together, we can conquer cancer and spread hope and healing to those in need. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more informative info on this channel. I have a lot of exciting videos coming out in the next few weeks, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Bye for now.